Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. Travel day in my rig and truck is usually a very busy day, even when I'm preparing the day before. In fact, all the items that I have to do can get me so tired that even if I start early in the morning, by the time I hit the road, I'm ready for a nap. Having a checklist to reduce the amount of things that you have to keep in mind helps immensely. It's also great because it keeps you safe and it keeps your equipment in top shape by not forgetting anything. Since there are so many steps and details, I've created a PDF of all the steps and you can download that from my website. The link to download that is in the description of this video. And as denoted in the PDF, not all of these items have to, have to happen each time you travel, but should happen frequently enough to maintain your equipment. Here's a step-by-step -step guide of all the processes that I go through to hitch up my fifth wheel to my truck and prepare for travel day. I do as much as I can the day and night before I leave. And these don't all have to happen in the, the same listed order. However, some parts do. I always wash my dishes so they're not rattling around in the sink. I wrap a bungee around my kitchen sink faucet. It sometimes leaks when I reconnect my water. There's a rubber band around my bathroom cabinet that I put in place. My shower door has a lock that needs to be clicked down into place. I make sure my fans, vents, and windows are off and closed up. Don't forget to bring your TV antenna down. The closet doors in my bedroom need to be locked into place as well. The laundry door is the same way. I also put away any little items that are on the nightstand into a basket that I've got fixed into place. I put up all my day and night shades so they don't swing while I'm driving. If my TV is up, I put that down and out of the way. I roll up the area rug and put that to the side along with the dog bed that's usually in the living room. Then I set the piano on top of that for safe storage. The dog bowls for food and water need to be moved to make way for the slides to come in. Putting all of this out of the way creates a great opportunity to vacuum the entire living room without obstructions. I like to double check that my wine rack glasses are securely fastened and in place. And here's a big one, don't forget to bring your awning in. I've seen a handful of awnings in ditches, whoops. I make sure to turn off all my lights, exterior and interior, including my water pump and water heaters. Then I bring everything that I want access to while traveling out to the truck like camera gear, sunglasses, water, snacks, purse. While the slides are still out and I have ample room, I use that opportunity to harness up the dog. And no matter what, I always do a visual sweep of the entire slide area and frame. Sometimes a cord can be plugged in, which will get in the way of it coming in, and either break the cord or restrain the slide. It doesn't take much resistance, especially with the finicky Schwintech slides, for a small wire in the motor to blow. Stay tuned for that fix on that situation. Then the slides can be brought in. I let the dogs on the bed while I do that and much of the outside tasks. First important step outside, put your tailgate down <laughs> before you back up into your trailer. It's all too often forgotten and either the inside or the outside, depending on whether you're unhitching or hitching up, hits the kingpin and dents the trailer, hit tailgate. This outdoor departure list is where some of the order of events becomes more critical. I back up the truck to be able to see how high or low I need to raise or lower the front jacks to make the connection. 
At this point, I make sure the jaws on the hitch are open and then back into it. This is then locked with a safety pin. I usually put the emergency disconnect brake in this pin as well. Then the tailgate can close and the trailer electric can be plugged into the truck. I always raise every jack further than where it was during the stay. Even if I was just parked one night. That way I can wipe the jack down starting with WD-40 and then spray PTFE dry lube on it. Then the rear jacks can be retracted. So this next step is uh, one of the scary steps that you really want to make sure you're paying attention and that you've double, triple, and quadruple checked. Your jaws are closed on the hitch because it's, it is possible, and apparently it has happened to more than just a few people, that the hitch, when you lower it, it's not fully uh, clawed in there. It's kind of balancing. And if you pull up your front jacks fully, it may still balance on there, but when you pull forward, the pin, the kingpin can come right off and you'll crush your truck and you'll do some serious damage to the front cap of your fifth wheel. So at this point, when you're, it's like the moment of truth, you know, to make sure everything's connected, just pull up the front jacks a little bit so you can drive forward and backward to make sure that you are fully connected. Before you pull forward, you want to make sure you haven't gotten to the step where you remove your jacks or your chucks because just in case you fall forward, you don't want to be rolling downhill or whichever way is downhill, front or back. It could be some serious damage. So take all your precautions, go through the list slowly, and think about every step. So it looks like I'm connected. I can bring these jacks up now and also remove my back chocks. Personally, I like to take a rag and wipe down the hoses I use. And this also goes for the electric cable. I'll wipe that down because it tends to get kind of dirty as it sits outside, especially if it's going to rain. I also like to have a 50 foot and a 25 foot because 50 foot sometimes you need, but the 25 foot is much quicker to wrap up and put away. In this case, I needed the 50 foot. Now I can unhook my power cord and my refrigerator automatically switches to gas. But if you've got a manual, manual one, you're going to have to turn on your gas refrigerator unless you don't want to run it. And always be sure to turn the breaker off before you disconnect. Don't disconnect the RV first because you could potentially have some hot connections. Turn off all the power here. Now this cord isn't dangerous, potentially dangerous. Now the doggies can be moved to the truck. If it's hot, I'll have started the engine to let the AC run to cool it down for them.
it might not seem important to lock your bin doors while you travel and I wouldn't lock it necessarily to keep it in from you know blowing open which actually you should do for that as well but when you're at a stoplight or something if you don't have your door locked or your bins locked somebody can literally walk up from the sidewalk and open your bin go inside so even in the RV I would absolutely lock my door once I got inside because imagine if you're driving down the road in your class A for example here you wouldn't even know in a fifth wheel but in a class A or C or whatever you're driving down and you're stopped to the stop by so many walks in your RV that'd be pretty freaky I mean what do you do then <laughs> never underestimate the importance of the final walk through I still have to get my chocks in the back because I backed up too close to them so they're tight this could save you 2,000 bucks 2,500 bucks on a new awning it could save you I don't even know how much hydraulic jack systems are 5,000 10,000 I don't know it could save you gear whole slide out you want to do a, always do a walk around make sure your awnings in or your antenna it's just important to do it's also good for peace of mind make sure your cap is on your your uh, dump tank your sewage hose I connect my bike in the back that's something you can check if you've got things auxiliary items make sure they're still tight and secure make sure you haven't left anything at your campsite looks like we're good to go so now that I'm in my truck I have another list so I want to make sure I've got my sunglasses in the truck and that they're reachable dogs are harnessed and secure Do I've got water destination set in my GPS get my phone charger plugged in I use that for my GPS so I always want to have that plugged in so the phone doesn't die while I'm in transit and I can't see where I'm going open the side mirrors position them for towing I can see when I turn my lights on that the trailer lights are indeed connected here I'll turn them off and then back on so I know I'm good for that scout out gas stations turn on TPMS position and turn on backup camera and turn on tow haul mode all right, time to drive, baby. Well, we've made it to the next camping site and before backing in, I always like to go back and check, you know, actually stand in the site where I'm going and make sure there's no trees or anything. So let's go check that out. So you can see this is actually one of the most luxurious spots I've ever been in. It's plenty wide, no trees hanging over, and uh, pretty easy back in. Super quick lesson, if you want the back of the trailer to go to the right, you move the bottom of the steering wheel to the right. If you want it to go to the left, move the bottom of the steering wheel to the left. If you want the front of the trailer to go to the right, you move it to the right. Front of the trailer to the left, move it to the left. So I always navigate from the back of the trailer. After you get that down, then you just have to practice and learn the response time of your trailer. Now that's really what makes backing up a trailer hard is because they respond in different times. So sometimes before you want to, the back of your trailer to turn, you have to turn your wheel even before that. So then it's just really learning you know, the response time of your particular trailer. I want to walk around and check make sure nothing is an obstruction of my slides and if you're in ever in doubt you can put your slide or put your back against the slide and put your foot out 
If you can do that, then you got plenty of room for your slide. And over here, I got plenty of space. And man, I have to say it again, this is the most luxurious spot I have ever parked in. Look at all the space I've got. Paved patio and a nice, compact, small gravel picnic area. Since it's pretty flat here, I'm just putting a downhill chalk on each side. I always hook up my electric first, not just so that I can open my slides and run the jacks, but so I can either get the AC going or the heat going inside the coach. Try to always make a habit of making sure your breakers are off before you plug in. Once you're plugged in here and on your RV, then you can flip your breaker. Then I can begin to unhitch. The first step is to get the front jacks down. Then you can disconnect the electric from the trailer. And remember, just like before, to bring the tailgate down. This is the opposite of where you can damage your truck if you forget. Take out the safety pin to be able to open the jaws. All right, this is a moment of truth on the arrival side. This is when you want to double check. You've definitely put your front jacks down. If they are not down and you are able to release this lever forward, you could literally have this slide backward, crush your truck, and then of course the cap would come crushing down on the hitch. Big mess. So I've double, triple, quadruple checked. I'm ready to open the lever. Sometimes this lever is going to be a little hard to pull because either this is raised too far up, so the kingpin's kind of lifting the back of the truck, or this is not high enough, so it's still it's still having pressure on the hitch. So if he opens it perfectly, it's pretty much fine. But if you cannot, this either has to go up or down. And you'll see this move back a little bit. That was a success. At this point, the hitch is free of the fifth wheel hitch, kingpin. The truck and the trailer are totally separate, so I can pull forward. Now I'm ready to open the slides so the dogs can go inside. But first, I like to level my trailer before operating slides. My trailer has an auto level feature, but I think I do a better job than it at leveling. Or maybe I just need to calibrate it. So I've checked outside for slide out clearance, but what I need to do is check inside See, this door likes to open. If this were actually open further, and I open this slide and it pushed back against this handle, it could either A, get the slide out of alignment, and that's hundreds of dollars to get it back fixed, or it could break the handle off, or it could pull the whole drawer out. So it's a little inconvenient, but I go in here and I look at the floor, and I make sure the dog bowls haven't moved where they're going to hang up on a slide. And then I go back here, make sure it's clear back here on the path, and then most likely it's clear on the roof. But I just do a quick sweep anyway to make sure nothing is in the way. A little inconvenient, but it uh, could save you hundreds of dollars. In fact, if you look here in the bedroom, this is the laundry door. And it's locked, but it's sticking out. You have to push it in. That already screwed up my wiring. It got the whole slide out of whack. 
and I still have not got it fixed because it's six hundred dollars so I have to uh, do a manual overwrite on it so I come back here and I make sure nothing is in the way Now the environment is prepared for their royal highnesses after a quick potty walk. Oh, these guys are going to love the squirrels. And the squirrels don't even seem to care. They're aware of the leash laws here. Finally, I lock my kingpin and I get water and sewer connected. Lock the truck and I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> Well, inevitably, your list is going to be a little different than mine. You're probably not going to have a bathroom cabinet that needs the rubber band on it. But you can take my list and prepare it for yours because there's a lot that should be the same, especially with the hooking up the fifth wheel. And when I first made out my list, I put everything on it because, one, I like to be super efficient, and two, I didn't want to forget anything. However, now I've done it so much that I actually don't follow a list. Sometimes, if I've got so much going on in my head, I will follow the list, particularly on the outside, hitching up from the outside, um, just so I don't have thoughts going this way and that, and then forget something really important. If you found any educational, informational, or entertainment value in this video or any video on this channel, please consider contributing on Patreon by becoming a patron. It can be a one-time thing or it can be a month-to-month -month sort of thing. Also, you can support the channel by going over to the Pippinings Merchandise Store and buying a t-shirt or a hoodie or a mug or anything else that is on there. There's multiple varieties of designs throughout the history of the channel as well as uh, Greyhound stuff that supports strictly the Greyhound adoption groups. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.